awesome hey y'all welcome back to my channel my name is amy today we're going to be talking about all the books i read in november i read eight and a half books <laughs> I say half because I'm going to talk about one, but I have not quite finished it yet. I am so close to the end. I fell asleep last night. I was trying to finish it, but I just couldn't go anymore. I fell asleep. Uh, so I only have just like a little bit left. I tried to read some today, but it's just been um, a packed day for me. And I only have a little bitty window to film today. So... I didn't get to finish it but I'm so close I can talk to you about it and I can kind of give you my rating so this month was the buzzword -a -thon. so some of my books are from that and then some are just from the rest of November so I have my little list here we'll start from the beginning oh uh, gosh it's been so long I feel like I feel like I read this book like last month but I mean well it is I did read it last month, which would be November, um, but I feel like I read it in October, but it was like the very first read of, for the month of November. This is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I wanted to like this book so bad, y'all, but I gave it two, two and a half stars. I just couldn't get into it. it. I don't know what it was. It just, it was really hard to read some of the parts. All in all, I, I didn't think it was the horror that I want that I thought it was going to be and so I guess maybe I hyped it up too much for myself and um just maybe disappointed myself was disappointed in it I don't know what it was but I didn't enjoy this as much as I wanted to as much as probably everyone else did I did listen to it it was narrated by Amy Landon um or is it London I think it's Landon <laughs> can't tell from my own writing. From what I remember, the narration was okay. Um, I think she did a pretty good job on the the voices, on, you know, distinguishing each character, but I, there was just nothing in her voice. So I tried reading it as well, and uh, that didn't do anything for me either. So like I said, two and a half stars. I was very upset that I didn't like it. But anyway, we have um, a young girl and her two dads, which I absolutely loved. And there, I don't remember if it was like a, I think it was some sort of like, like a vacation just for the family. And, um, and they were at this cabin in the woods. It wasn't like a creepy cabin, haunted cabin or anything, but, um, they were there for a little family vacay. And, um, one day this, this guy shows up while Wynn, who was the little girl while she was playing outside and he showed I think I forget his name I forget there was like a couple of the characters um, I remember when and then her dads were Eric and Andrew um, but I don't really remember the rest of the characters um, but anyway uh, this one character just popped up and was telling when that she she and her dads needed to help them uh, and if they didn't, um, the world was going to end, basically. And so th the story was, it was a lot of, you know, uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to let you in. We don't believe you, blah, blah, blah. When, when, the, when this guy and the rest of his group went up to the house and tried to, you know, like coax them to let them in. It was a lot of that and I just got bored with that and then finally they got in and they proceeded to have to do all of these horrible things in order to save the world and to, it just didn't make any sense to me I just I don't know I got a little upset about some of the things that happened in the book um, that put a damper on the ending of the book for me so I'm just gonna leave it at that if you've read it or if you haven't read it I don't want to say too much but yeah just the whole just the whole thing just made no sense to me just I just didn't like it. <laughs> then I read, or I also listened to, An Unwanted Guest by Sherry LaPena. I I really like this book. I gave it four stars. It was um, definitely, it's definitely a good book to read at this time of the year. It's kind of set in the winter and they're in like this snowstorm. Um, so we have these different these different characters. Gosh, it's been so long. I don't even remember their names. This this also kind of reminds me of another book that I read in November because it involves a, a good amount of characters that go to this, um, like this 
renovated hotel, like old fashioned kind of hotel, deep in the woods. And, you know, it's very nice type of um, hotel, very small, very intimate type of thing. Um, but they go there to to sort of get away from whatever's going on in their lives. They have a couple that's coming, that goes to this cabin or this hotel to um, maybe help their marriage. Um, there's like a, a couple that's getting married that wants to like get away before their wedding or something like that. Um, it's like almost like a celebrity couple. There's a writer that's coming in. Um, she's taking care of her mother and she just needs a break. You know, and there's some other characters. Gosh, I'm so sorry. It's been so, I feel like it's been forever since I've read these books. But I, I enjoyed the story of, you know, all these characters. It was from their different points of views, which I really like. So one evening, um, they, one guest is found dead at the bottom of the stairs. And it kind of goes from there. Um, after that, like a snowstorm comes in and they lose power. They use everything. Like there's no, there's no phones. You know, they can't use their phones. There's no, um, there's no electricity. There's, there's just like nothing. And they're all stuck in this hotel with nothing but each other to keep them company there. You know, they, they kind of, after um, the, the murders start to happen and other people start to get murdered, they all kind of start to huddle together. And um, because who could it be? Could it be someone in their group? Um, is, is someone outside that can get in, that they don't know how they can get in? So the, the actual um, killer was, a, was actually a shock to me. I didn't see it coming. And then there was like a little bonus um, that happened at the end. Not necessarily a bonus, but something that I was not expecting whatsoever. So I, I thought it was a very exciting read. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed all the, narr the narration of all the characters. Um, it was read by Hilary Huber, which I thought done a fantastic job at narrating this book. I did start off reading it. It was available on Scribd, so I went ahead and just started listening to it because that's, I was really enjoying reading it and like throughout the day, I was like, I really want to continue this book. So it was on script. So I went ahead and I just started listening to it. And the narration for that was was good, as well as me just reading it. So, um, so yeah, four stars on this one. Next, I picked up Poison Pages by Lorna Barrett. This is part of the Booktown Mysteries uh, series. I believe this is number 12. So this is just a cute, cozy mystery. Our main character is Trisha. And she is considered the jinx of Stoneham um, because ever since, ever since she moved into town and opened up her little bookstore, which is called Haven't Got a Clue because she loves mysteries and thrillers, and people have just started like dying <laughs> left and right. And here we are at book 12 and we have an, another uh, death at Trisha's feet. In fact, it's in her home while she's throwing herself like a... Um, housewarming party I guess because she just renovated her new place and she's also was going to give an announcement uh, that she was going to be running for um the pair the I think the, the council or something uh for the town she's going to be like on the town council um I mean she was going to like make that announcement and but then someone ends up dead at her party so Trisha goes on to figure out what happened uh, was it food poisoning? What was what was it in her stuff in her food that maybe he was allergic to and maybe he didn't know or You know what what happened? So just your your cute cozy mystery It does take place during the winter months during Christmas and New Year's So if you're into cozy mysteries, this is a good one if and if you're into this series It's a good time to pick up poison pages because uh, it's around takes place around this time of the year but I thought it was cute. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed reading it. I, I love Trisha and all her little um, adventures and mishaps that happen around her. Uh, the only thing I don't like, uh, and I did end up listening, I started reading it, but I ended up listening to it because, um, again, I just wanted to keep keep going with it because I was enjoying it so much. But this one was read, and all the other ones prior to this were, were read by Karen White. And I'm just, I'm just not into her voice. I thought she did a good job at um, distinguishing her characters, but I just didn't like her voice. I don't know what it is about her voice. It just doesn't do it for me. 
Um, but anyway, besides the point, I liked the story. My next two books um, were male male romances. I always got to throw in my male male romances. I love me some male male romance. So the first one I read was hashtag junkie and I'll put a picture of it here because I don't have it. I listened to this one on um, I think Scribd. I think it was on Scribd. Um, it's by Cam Cambria Hebert. We would say a bear but I think the narrator said Hebert. <laughs> Um, and it was read by Guy Locke, which done a fantastic job. I love this story. It was um, friends to lovers type of story and one of the friends didn't realize, you know, he was gay, bi, or, or whatever um, he ended up considering himself as. And I love those type of stories. So our story here revolves around Drew and Trent. Drew is an indie race car driver. Trent is a frat boy and Trent knows he is gay um, and he's I guess had feelings for his friend for a long time. They've been best friends for a long time and he just didn't want to you know hurt that friendship. But he wasn't sure what those feelings meant. Like he knew he felt something for Drew but he wasn't sure what that was. So uh, once he realized what it could be he thought he would go out and see if those feelings could be for someone else, you know, did or was this just towards Drew? So I love that story of Trent. He was like finding himself and then you also have the story of like his fraternity and uh, how the frat boys treat him when they find out that, you know, he prefers men. You know, the, the loyalty as far as like your fraternity brothers and then uh, then we have Drew's story where he's just into cars and he, he loves racing and how he would love to become something more. So not only do we have the love story between between Drew and Trent, we also have like their personal stories on the side, which I personally loved. Um, this was definitely a slow burn book. Like you're just like pining for them to get together. Uh, and when it finally happens, it's just magical. <laughs> so uh, I loved this little story, five stars all the way. This is also in um, in a series. I think it's called the Gear, Sh the Gear Shark series. Hold on. Yes, Gear Shark. This was number one. Um, number, book number two is called Hashtag Rev. So Junkie kind of ends very unsatisfactory. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, so I'm anxious to get to Hashtag Rev and which will continue Drew and Trent's story because I can't wait to see where they end up with each other and how their futures are involved in this. I, you know, I don't know if this, this is, series is going to come to an end with just book two, but I'm anxious to see what it holds for Drew and Trent. Next up was Hat Trick. I'll put a picture of it right here. This is book five of the Fake Boyfriend series and this is by Eden Finley. So I read this one on my Nook absolutely loved it. I believe it's Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, um, it's, it's in, it's in there and you know, read it for free. These fake boyfriend books, I think can probably be read on their own, but if you, all the other guys are always involved in the stories some kind of way. So if you want to know how they relate to the couple that you're reading about, I definitely think it's best to read this from the beginning. You won't be disappointed. I've been loving this book from this series from book one. So this is Jet and Soren's story. Jet is the little brother of one of the other characters from another book. I believe, I believe Matt is from book two. Yes. So this is Jet's story uh, of him and Soren or Caleb Sorensen, um, who is a hockey player, uh, NHL hockey star, I guess. So if you if you've read the series or you go back and read the series, um, Jet actually kind of started off as, um, he was always a musician, but he started off like in New York as like just, you know, just a, a low kind of um, just getting gigs how he could. Um, and he eventually ended up with, with a band of his own and has become uh, famous. And he is, there, him and his band are the front liners of this boy band called Eleven. There it is. So they're on tour right now. 
Um, Jet and one of the, the guys from Eleven had, were kind of hooking up and they don't want the media, like, these 11 boys are supposed to be, like, for the girls. You know what I'm saying? Boy band. Um, so, the 11 guy, I don't remember his name. So, the guy from 11 has to, like, fake an engagement or whatever. But, Jet seeing this, it, like, it, like, hurts him. So, he just, he tells his manager he's got to get away. You know, he's got to, while this is going on, he doesn't want to see it, doesn't want to be a part of it. So, he's got to get away. Um, so, he goes to meet his brother and all his other friends in Fiji and Caleb is also there as well. Caleb has also just come off of a uh, relationship that didn't work out. I don't want to say too much about the past relationship because it was a little bit in the previous book in case you want to go back and read the books um, to find out a little bit of part of Caleb's story. Uh, so Caleb's there um, by himself and the other guys have their significant others um and then but then you realize that caleb and jet sort of have a bit of a history that you didn't know of and they're kind of reconnected on this trip so it's just their story um their past story you get a lot of their past story and um and then their story moving on with each other uh, so it's just really cute i enjoyed it i love all these books in the fake boyfriend series this one not all of them are fake boyfriends like the first three were definitely i think like a fake boyfriend story um but the rest of them have kind of been not really but they're still you know involved in the series because they involve all the guys it's just a lot of fun i love it i highly recommend it uh i gave it five stars so now we've come up to my buzzwordathon reads which i only got to read two books during that week i know so sad <laughs> I actually listened to both these books. I started reading one and I'm almost done with it. I'm not quite finished. Um, it was a very hefty book, but I've been enjoying it. We'll get to that. But so the two that I finished were The One and 13 Minutes. Um, I started off with The One. And this was like the winner of the bunch. I absolutely loved this book so, so much. Highly, highly recommend it. The narration was phenomenal. It is a like a multicast, so each character has a voice, and I personally love that in a in like an audio, audio type book when every character has a voice. It's so much fun. So this is about a sort of like a match dot com kind of thing. You match your DNAs together with someone else. You know. This, this website matches your DNA with your soulmate or the one. And you're supposed to like fall in love like no other love before. And that is it, which I find very intriguing. Uh, it was very fun, fun to read. So we follow five characters in this story. Like I said, they each have a voice. They each have their own story, very unique stories, um, which I enjoyed all of them. I especially loved Nick's story. If you read it, you'll know why. Um, I also really liked Christopher's story. He was a very, very unique character. Uh, I don't know if I should say what kind of character he was, <laughs> but he was very, very unique. And these five characters had their, you know, like I said, their, their own story of why they went on to matchyourdna.com to find the one. Our first character we have is Mandy. Um, she, her husband actually left her for his match. Um, so she decided that she's going to find her match. So we have her story, uh, which turns out to be crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, and then we have Jade. Oh, you know, she's just, just your average character. She just wanted to find you know, the love of her life. Um, and when she does find him, uh, there is such a twist behind that story. Um, and then, then we have Christopher who, okay. Christopher is a serial killer. He wanted to see, just see who his match would be and how they would interact with each other. His story is crazy. Uh, just absolutely crazy. Then we have Nick. Nick is engaged to, I forget her name, 
because obviously she wasn't important to me. <laughs> but she wants to find out if they're made for each other, if they are each other's match. Um, and the results, let's move on. Then we have, <laughs> so that was Mandy, Jade, Christopher, Nick. Our last character is Ellie, Elsie. Why do I always fumble with her name? Ellie, her name is er Ellie. Um, her story is, is quite interesting as well. I'm not gonna give you any details of her story just because it involves a lot more with the book. Um, but they, like I said, they are all unique stories. I loved all of them, five star rating. I was just, I couldn't stop listening. Like I said, it was, it was read, narrated by a, by a multicast of, char of um, narrators. Every character had their voice. It was phenomenal. And then I listened to 13 Minutes by uh, Sarah Penborough. Yes. This was, this was okay. I gave it, I gave it three stars. Um, it's very, it's a young adult mystery. It was a very, very young adult. It involves your your high school Barbies. In fact, they, they're called the Barbies in, in this book. Um, you know, popular, pretty girls that everybody wants to be, everybody wants to be their friend, and, and, and they're ferocious to other people. So our, our main character, Natasha, is, is she dies for 13 minutes. In the beginning of the book, I was thinking, oh, okay, well, she's going to, like, turn herself around. You know, she's not going to be the Barbie anymore. She's going to realize, you know, that life is precious and you, you need to not be so self-involved, I guess. You, you know, you need to be more humble and um, in, involve everyone, not just your little clique, you know. I thought she was going to come around. Then she doesn't and like her true colors come out and she's like this little bitch that you just want to punch in the face <laughs> um but we also follow her her friend from like her middle school days and her name is becca or rebecca they she's called tasha and then rebecca is becca she's kind of like your kind of emo grunge kind of girl and during this time of where um, Natasha is trying to figure out what happened to her. She befriends Becca again. And that's, this, that's when you start to think, oh, okay, well, she's going to like, she's going to become a better person. She's not going to be like a Barbie anymore. Um, and she wants to be with her old friends and uh, be around them. But, and then like she starts being a bitch again. It, it just, it takes a very long time to get to the nitty gritty, I guess. It was like the last 10 chapters of the book where I really got more involved with what was happening and what was going on and who done it kind of thing. I really wasn't expecting it. I, I was, I had it, like they had it all laid out for you. The book has it all laid out for you. You're like, oh, I know, I know what happens. And you, you know what happens all the way up to like these last 10 chapters and then you're like, oh, okay. Um, but what I didn't like was that it was it took so long and there was just a lot of just un, to me just a lot of unnecessary in the middle stuff I don't know but I, I enjoyed the last bit of the book um, and I, I really enjoyed the twist of it but yeah that was about it it's definitely definitely young adult but the ending was was a good time I enjoyed the ending very much but three stars the next book that I didn't complete during that week, but I did complete before the end of November, is Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. Surprisingly, I, I did not have high hopes for this book because I heard that it wasn't very good. I enjoyed it immensely. I gave it four stars. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like a five star worthy of, of for me, but it was definitely a good, a good solid four stars. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, it kind of reminded me of the unwanted guest, Sherry Lupina's un unwanted guest, because again, we have all these strangers that come together to this spa to sort of better themselves. Um, it's called Tranquillum House, I believe. 
and it's ran by um, Masha, who is Russian. I listened to this and I highly recommend the audio because it totally brings this book to life. I think I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did if I'd have just read it. Um, it's read by Carolyn Lee. I think she's might have narrated some of Leanne Moriarty's books before, but she did a fantastic job on these characters. She did great with distinguishing each character. They each had a voice. I loved it. The characters, she made the characters funny and witty and and sad and it was I I really enjoyed it. Everyone, all these perfect strangers um had a reason to be at this Tranquillum house. They were there to kind of cleanse their bodies, lose weight, um become a better person, uh fix their marriage. So it was it was a lot of things, a lot of different stories and they all come together to sort of help each other and this tranquilum house you kind of get the feeling in the beginning that something's not something's fishy about this place so yeah i don't want to again i don't want to say too much but there there was something quite strange about tranquilum house but it brought all these character characters together i really enjoyed how it ended how it was just pleasant and I just, I just really liked how the characters just were involved with each other and in their lives and helped each other become a better person. There was a lot of life lessons in this book. A lot of lessons learned, a lot of things um, that, you know, you kind of look at and you're like, okay, I need to, I need to maybe do that for myself kind of thing, you know. Um, it was very enlightening. I enjoyed it a lot. And then lastly, this was supposed to be in my bud, buzzword uh, readathon, is Nearly Gone by El Casamano. This is another young adult mystery. I enjoyed this immensely. And I'm almost like, like I have like just a tidbit left. Uh, I just kind of got to the ending of like who was involved with everything that went on in this book. The whole time I'm like, oh, it's gotta be this person. It's gotta be this person. It's gotta be this person. Mind blown at the end. Cause it was none of those people. <laughs> I was not expecting this person that it was. Um, but I haven't finished reading it. So I don't know if there's more to the story. Uh, I definitely want to get to um, Nearly and Reese's little relationship that was forming throughout this book I haven't like finished like got to the ending of that so I don't I don't know how their relationship is going to end up but I just finished reading the like who done it part um, but anyway we have nearly who she likes to read the I think they're called what are the ads called she likes reading these missing connection ads in the paper her dad left a couple like years ago and um she she just knew that he was leaving her messages in this paper um until one day she finds this little passage that has to do with the scientific thing she's a very smart student um so it kind of like gives her clues of like who's going to be like who's going to be the next victim but she kind of just stumbles upon this this ad in the missing connections and um she doesn't really put it together until the the first person comes up missing and then the second person um ends up dead and then things start rollerballing after that and and this this person is leaving her clues in the missing connections paper so in the meantime she's trying to figure out these clues before the next victim gets killed uh, to prevent them from from getting killed but in the meantime she um, she gets involved with Reese who is um, who's just got out of juvie of some sort he is out on good behavior um, but he's also a narc for the police and he, he, they want them they want him to follow her and kind of get closer to her she's not supposed to know this but she finds it out 
because she overhears them talking. So when he shows up for her to tutor him, you know, of course she's going to push him away and all that, all that great stuff. So I loved their little like love story throughout the whole thing. You know, like, was he sincere or was he doing this for the cops? Um, she was like starting to fall for him. Um, it was very, it, it was very iffy, like, but I loved it. I loved the chemistry between them two. Um, uh, I loved the mystery of everything that was happening, trying to figure out who, who was behind these killings, you know, was it a student? Was it, um, someone, someone else, you know, I don't know. So Reese was also involved in like other police things that he had to kind of put himself in, um, like, uh, people that were selling drugs at school or drugs at parties and things like that. He had to put himself in there and become that person in order to turn them in to the cops. So, you know, everyone's like, stay away from Reese. He's a bad guy. You know, he's involved with drugs, but really he was, to me, he's a good guy. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, it was just a fun, a fun mystery, fun young adult mystery to me, young adults hit and miss. For me as far as mystery goes some can be a little bit too young adult this one i found um this was very very good i mean it was you know it involved young young adults they were like seniors in high school but it was it was a lot more mature than say like 13 minutes i enjoyed this one a lot more um the story was good the characters were great uh i loved the the whodunit part because it totally blew my mind was not expecting that at all um, I loved it. Um, I haven't quite rated it yet because I haven't really finished it, but so far it's a good like four and a half stars for me. I might bump it up to five depending on the ending. I don't know. I only have like, like maybe five pages to go. Um, but I want to know what's going to happen between her and Reese. Not 10 pages, about 10 pages left to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I gotta have, I gotta find out what happens between her and Reese. That's gonna, that's gonna maybe up my rating a little bit or decide my final rating. I don't know. So stay tuned for my final uh, rating and review on Goodreads uh, after I finish reading those 10 pages. So there we have it. All the books I read in November. This is my thumbnail. <laughs> Plus the two male male romances that I threw in there. But I had a good month, a good reading month for the most part. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these, what you thought about them, or if you plan on reading any of them. What did you read in, no in November? What are you reading in December? I don't know what I'm going to read in December. I already started one book, um, but I'll tell you all about it in my December TVR. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have an idea of what I'm going to do for December, um, um, but I'll let y'all know in that video, which will be up on Friday. So. Thank y'all so much for watching. As always, all my social medias will be linked down below. Uh, come follow me. Let's be friends. And I will see y'all in my video on Friday. Bye y'all.